If you're a leftist or a socialist, I think you probably already know that Joe Biden is extremely, extremely out of touch, and he's just not the right person for this moment in time, but like it or not, he's going to be the next president. So I know that some people were hopeful that maybe there was a glimmer of hope that maybe on some issues he'd wake up and he'd be less out of touch than he previously presented himself to be. Unfortunately, leaked audio reveals that he is as out of touch as everyone feared, unfortunately. So Ryan Grimm of The Intercept explains, Democrats in the House, Senate, and around the country have been urging President-elect Joe Biden to use the maximum amount of executive authority available to him in order to grow the economy, expand civil rights, protect the climate, and otherwise implement the agenda he ran on, despite the expected obstruction from a Republican Senate. On Tuesday, a group of civil rights leaders urged him privately to take a slew of executive action during a two-hour virtual meeting. While Biden didn't close the door to anything specific, he was far from enthusiastic about the idea of using executive action. A recording of the virtual meeting attended by Biden, Vice President-elect Kamala Harris, and civil rights leaders was obtained by The Intercept. Here's what Biden told civil rights leaders. Quote, so there's some things that I'm going to be able to do by executive order. I'm not going to hesitate to do it. But what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to do what used to Vanita Gupta probably used to get angry with me during the debates uh, when you'd have some of the people you were supporting saying on day one, I'm going to have an executive order to do this, not within the constitutional authority. I am not going to violate the Constitution. Executive authority that my progressive friends talk about is way beyond the bounds. And as as one of you said, maybe it was you, Reverend Al Sharpton, whether it's far left or far right, there is a constitution. It's our only hope, our only hope, and the way to deal with it is where I have executive authority. I will use it to undo every single damn thing this guy has done by executive authority, but I'm not going to exercise executive authority where it's a question, where I can come along and say I can do away with assault weapons. There's no executive authority to do away with that, and no one has fought harder to get rid of assault weapons than me. But you can't do it by executive order. We do that. Next guy comes along and says, well, guess what? By executive order, I guess everybody can have machine guns again. So we got to be careful. Biden also warned the civil rights leaders that pressure on the incoming administration around police reform could hurt the party's chances in the Georgia Senate runoffs, claiming that the Republicans' ability to define that party as in favor of defunding the police is how they beat the living hell out of us across the country. So, so much about his assumptions of what the left is expecting, it's just completely off base. And the first thing I've got to respond to is defunding the police. And he says that, you know, civil rights leaders shouldn't pressure his administration to do police reform until after the Georgia runoffs because that could hurt their chances. I don't think he realizes that if you want a chance to win both of those seats, you're not going to do it without black voters in Georgia. You do realize that, right? So basically turning a blind eye to their demands is the worst possible thing you can do. If you win, if John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock win, it's going to be because black voters turned out. So for you trying to play 4D chess and forcing them to not pressure you until after this election, I mean, first of all, you're not even going to be sworn in until after this election takes place. Uh, second of all, you're basically just asking them to shut up. Don't talk about civil rights. Don't talk about defunding the police. Don't talk about police reform because you could hurt their chances. When in actuality, these are the issues you have to touch on if you want to win. It's it's shocking. Like, it's honestly shocking that he's this out of touch. Now, when it comes to executive orders, basically, he is assuming that we want him to go above and beyond what the Constitution allows. Nobody's asking you to violate the Constitution, you moron. We are asking you to take action if you are able to do so, if it is within the confines of the Constitution. If you can make a case that taking some action falls within the realms of what's constitutionally permissible, that's what we want you to do. We don't want you to violate the Constitution, dummy. That's not what we're asking. Like... Of course, if you do a lot of things via executive order, that's not ideal because the next administration can easily overturn it. But if it's possible for you to undo the damage that Trump has caused, if it's possible for you to take action if Republicans retain control of the Senate and they're still obstructing everything you want, then you should do it. We're not saying you should do everything via executive order. The fact that this is his interpretation of what progressives want, it's insane. And it's funny because... 
one of the main asks from progressives, including people like Chuck Schumer, which it's probably because he, you know, has a primary coming up, but progressives are very vocal about wanting him to take executive action to cancel student debt. It's an easy thing that you can do to reward the people who got you elected and turn them out in two years and four years. So he is basically saying mm, things like that, not going to happen. It, it's not constitutional, except... What did Donald Trump do? He canceled some student loans of veterans, but he still used the pen to do that. So if you're not going to take whatever action you can that is constitutionally permissible to actually change people's lives, I mean, you could look forward to getting decimated in 2022. And, you know, I, I can foresee a situation where Republicans... They retake control of all of government back in 2024 because Joe Biden, he just he doesn't get it. You think that we're asking you to violate the Constitution when that's not what we're asking. OK, if you can do something and the Senate and Congress is unwilling to act, we're saying you should do that. And if it's easy, if you can cancel student debt via executive order, which you can, then do it. But he's like, no, no you guys just want me to, like, break the law and violate the Constitution. It's just he is insufferable. Again, he is not going to be able to meet this moment. And as a result, Democrats will be decimated in upcoming elections. I hope I'm wrong. I hope that he proves me wrong. But we've gotten every indication from him that um, we're going to be proven right. You know, you, you, you know, you know, the, you know, the thing, thing. You're getting nervous, man, man.